Remember, aggregate planning isn't really about using certain formulas. It's really all about just staying organized. Now, let's take a look at these questions. Livingston Fabrication has created the following aggregate plan for the next five months. Okay, interesting. Here's the forecast. Aggregate plans always have a forecast. And then there's the plan. Oh, it's a perfectly level plan. Okay, fine. What are we supposed to do with this? The plan is finished. Assume Livingston will have nothing in inventory at the end of July. Okay, that means that right here they're starting with nothing. Livingston employs 1,000 production workers. I better underline this and it takes one assembly worker five minutes to assemble one unit of finished good. Okay, the unit's complete at that point. Each production assembly worker can provide 150 hours of assembly time a month. I'm sure that's important without requiring overtime pay. Please answer the following four questions. Here we go, based on this information. Okay, first question. Livingston wants to complete this plan without working any overtime in assembly. Logically, how many additional, now notice that's underlined, production assembly workers should Livingston hire at the start of August? You go, huh, what? It's just logic. It's not a particular formula. I mean, let's think about the situation. What they're proposing is that they're going to produce 2 million units, whatever these things are, a month. We have information about how productive a particular person is, and we know, and they just, we were told, that they have 1,000 people. Okay, we need to figure out, basically, how many people are they going to need in order to produce 2,000, or excuse me, yeah, 2 million each month. Well. Let me see if I can just see, just got scratch paper. Put some of this information to work. Okay, one worker. One worker can produce one unit in five minutes and one worker gives you 150 hours a month. All right, 150 hours times 60 why am I doing that? I'm just curious how many minutes that is. Well, that's 9,000 minutes. Okay, why did I want to know that? Because it takes five minutes to make one of these things. So if I said 9,000 divided by five, again, this is you know just logic. My calculator says 1,800, that's units. You say, um, okay, so what have you discovered? That one worker can produce 1,800 units, just logic, right, without working any overtime per month. Now, they want to produce 2 million units. So, if this is your target, 2 million, and you divide 1,800 into it, that's going to reveal, so to speak, how many people you need to produce that many in a month. And on my calculator that comes out kind of messy, 1,111.11111. Now remember, we're hiring people, right? We have people. There is, they don't mention anything about part-time work. There's no such thing as a part of a person here. That means in order to cover the two million, uh, there is a little rule of thumb here, we're gonna have to round up. All right, so we need a total of 1,112 people, right, to cover that. Okay, you say, all right, fine, that's what they need each month. Now, notice what the question asked. I don't see 1,112 workers here because they asked about additional. Oh, yeah, and they have 1,000 people right now. So, if this is what we need and that's what we have, yeah, duh, just logic. We're going to need another 112 people in order to carry out this plan without overtime. Yes. Oh, okay. Now, next couple questions. I'm sort of scanning ahead. I'm looking here. What will be the ending inventory level during the month of October? What will be the average inventory level? And then something about inventory costing money. Oh, you know what? At this point, they've given us a plan and they're asking various things about inventory. The best thing to do aggregate planning, it's always all about just staying organized, is let's go ahead and expand the table. And that usually in these aggregate planning tables, don't we have a line for inventory levels? I like to work in ending inventory. I find it's the most intuitive, you know, easiest for me to picture. I'm just tacking on another row. I mean, that's 
what that gap was left there for in the problem. All right, now they are asking about like certain months, but the easiest the easiest way to do this is to go ahead and figure out what the inventory levels would be for the whole plan and then to go back and to answer the specific questions. Oh, okay. So, again, just logic, inventory logic. They said in the problem that they in the end of July, which is the beginning of this plan, they don't have any in inventory. So, at the end of August, how much would they have in inventory? Well, this is how much they produced. This is how much they're forecasting they will use or ship out or sell. This minus that, well, you'll have 500,000 left over. Now for September, September you're going to start with that 500,000. You're going to make another 2 million and then you're going to ship out 1,500. So this plus this minus this means that there'll be one million left over in inventory at the end of September. Or inventory logic, the beginning inventory, now for October, one million, plus production, which is two million, minus uh, demand, which is two million. Oh, well actually what we're gonna do is just kind of leave that one million in inventory. Then for November, begin with one million, add another two million, we're up to three million, ship out three million, whoops, we just wiped out inventory. The ending inventory for November is zero. And then for December, zero plus two million minus 500, we have built up inventory again to 1500. So that, those calculations that I just rattled through, that's that uh, inventory logic expression. Ending inventory is beginning inventory plus production minus demand each period. Where do I get beginning inventory? It's the ending inventory of the period before. All right, now, what is it they actually asked? What will be the ending, that's good, that's what we were talking about, ending inventory level during the month of October? I just need to look it up. October, this was ending inventory, one million, there's my answer, one million. Okay, now what will be the average inventory during the month of September? Average. Now, September is here, okay, that's good. This is the ending inventory. Average inventory, here I can write it, is beginning inventory plus ending inventory divided by two. That's what you're averaging. Oh, okay, so now I just have to be careful I'm doing it for the right month. For September, the beginning inventory is 500,000, the ending inventory of the month before. The ending inventory is 1 million. These are the two numbers, essentially, that I am averaging. 500,000, 1 million, add them together, divide by two, their average is D. Now, four, if it costs Livingston $2 to hold one unit of finished good in inventory for one month, what is the total holding cost of this five month plan? You know what, wait a minute, how do I calculate that? Oh, all right, well notice that each one of these columns in the table is a month. The ending inventory in August, for instance, is 500,000. Here's the assumption. That means that we must have held 500,000 for a month. The ending inventory, and I'm just picking another month, October is 1 million. The assumption is we must have held 1 million through that month. Ah, all right, so how do I calculate the total cost of this plan? Well, first off, you can add up all these numbers. Let's see, 1 million, 1 million is 2 million. These two things are another 2 million. This adds up to 4 million. We have a total of 4 million unit months of inventory, right? I just added them up, but don't answer yet. Notice that that is volunteered down here as one of the choices because it's $2 for each unit. So it's the 4 million times two for a total holding cost of 8 million. Oh, okay. Now that was all related to Livingston. These last two questions here are standalone questions. Oh, and this question, question five, is an example of a question that looks simple because it's small, but you need to stay alert. Okay, now, here I'll show you why. A warehouse began the month of October with 300 units of good, but its inventory had fallen to 100 beginning of November and then increasing to 200 beginning of December. Okay, now first off, that's just a sentence, right? I highly recommend organize, stay organized. Don't work with the sentence, make yourself a table. We have October, November, 
and December. And I need to make a very clear label what was the information I was given beginning inventory. Okay, and then, yeah, the numbers. They said 300 for October, 100 for November, and then 200 for December, right? All right, I've done nothing other than just organize this first sentence, that's all. And then the only other thing there here is the question, which of the following best describes the change in average monthly inventory? from October to November. All right, now first off, you're thinking, okay, fine, I just have to say something about the change from the 300 to the 100, right? Because it is from October to November. Remember that the 300 to the 100, I was very careful to label it to remind myself that's beginning inventory. They're asking average inventory. Now that I have created this table, it's easy to create another column for scratch work, right? Average inventory. Let's see, average inventory is beginning inventory plus ending inventory divided by two. Say I wanted to calculate the average inventory for October. Well, the beginning inventory is 300. You say, I don't know what the ending inventory is. It must be 100 because the ending inventory for a period is the beginning inventory for the period after it. So 300 plus 100, that's what we're averaging. The average inventory during October is, what is that, 200? And then for November, the beginning inventory is 100, but the ending inventory is apparently 200 because that's the beginning inventory of the next month. So this is what I'm averaging. 100 plus 200 divided by two. The average inventory for November is 150. These are the two numbers that we need to base our answer on. These are the average monthly inventory for October and November. Now. The question didn't ask for either one of them. It asked for the best characterization of the change from 200 to 150. So we need to remember our little convention that when you're talking about percent change, remember it's A minus B divided by B, always what you're subtracting out of, and generally, another way to say that is current minus previous divided by previous. If the percent change that you happen to be calculating has anything to do with time, then this second way that I wrote it makes a little bit more sense. Current or newer, new minus old divided by old, that's another way that you could say it. Anyway, we just need to fill in the numbers that we have because current minus previous, new minus old, um, younger minus older, well, November, would be the newer, the younger, right? October is in the past, so it's the 150 that goes in the front, minus the 200, because it's older, that makes it the B, divided by 200, oh, so it's like 50. Uh, no, wait a minute, it's negative 50 divided by 200. It's a negative 25%. Oh, yeah. Average inventory from October to November dropped by, that's why it's important who's the A and who's the B, dropped by about 25%, negative 25%. Okay. One last question. Similar question in that it's a couple long sentences, but you know what? I would sketch it. Customer demand for some finished good is, see again, we got 1,000 for January, 2,000 for February, 3,000 for March. If the company produced the finished good, has nothing in inventory, so we're talking about inventory, how much should it plan uh, to produce in March? It wants to follow a level schedule. This one, it, this is a little mini aggregate planning problem, so I would create the more usual table as if it were in a spreadsheet. We have a forecast of demand. One thousand, two thousand, three thousand. And this is an aggregate plan, right? So we're going to have a plan. 
and then we're going to have inventory levels. And it even said that it doesn't have anything in inventory right now, right? And what is it asking for? It's asking for how much we should produce in March. Okay, well let me spruce up the table and then figure out how to fill in that particular box because that's the answer to the question. Let's see. Uh, how much should it plan to produce in March? This is our target. It, what number should we put in here? Right? If it, wait a minute, how are we supposed to fill in that one box? Once plans to follow a level schedule. Okay, first off, that's actually our most critical hint. You know, how much should it produce in March? If it plans to follow a level schedule, that means that whatever they plan to produce in March is exactly what they plan to produce in January and February. If we can figure out how to fill in the one yellow box, we actually fill, figured out how to fill in everything on the production line. Okay, but because a level plan, you always produce the same amount each month. You say, well, fine, I still don't see how we're supposed to figure out what number goes there that leaves it nothing in inventory at the end of March. There is one other cell here we can fill out and that's that one right there. They want inventory to be to zero out at the end of March. You say okay now we actually have everything that we need to figure out what belongs there in the highlighted box because they're starting with nothing. Notice that starting with nothing ending with nothing. Okay if you want to get all the way to here right and supply everything but be exactly out have nothing extra I think cumulative amounts you just need to have produced this much by then well that's 1000 plus 2000 plus 3000 that's a total of 6000 okay so if you want to supply March but have nothing left over you need to have produced a total of 6000 by the end of that month if you're following a level plan that means you did the same thing each month that's what we need 6,000 divided by 3 is 2,000. That's the level production rate that we need. That's the number that we need. Test it, because it goes here as well, and here. And if they did that, let's see, 2,000 minus 1,000, they'd have 1,000 left over in inventory. 1,000 plus 2,000 minus 2,000 means they still have 1,000 left over in inventory, but then the 1,000 plus 2,000 minus the 3,000 means, da-da, it works. They'd have exactly nothing in inventory. So in figuring out, and they only asked how much is produced in March, we also figured out how much they have to produce for the entire plant.